The big business we got to get to is UFC 218 last night was amazing. Yeah, that was crazy. It was, that's, two, I mean, that's two cards in a row, or I don't know how many cards there have been in between, but that's two good cards recently. Yeah, two pay-per-views back-to-back, because 217 yeah. was just nuts, and then yeah. 218 was, was last night. And that, was, that was crazy, man. I mean, from the Yancey Madero's uh, Caldwell Oliveira fight, which was madness on the prelims, all the way to Max versus Jose, which was really good. But the fight I want to talk about is... Uh, Cejudo uh, Pettis? No, <laughs> Cejudo versus Pettis. Look, <laughs> you know what's crazy is that for me, that's not all bad. You know, like you no. guys might be like, oh, that was so terrible. No, it wasn't bad. It was just, it was just the fights that was sandwiched between made it like impossible for them to. That's where they got they got to wake up and they got to get online and be like, oh, let me see what everyone says about my fight. And then they probably are like, did I even fight last night? Because everyone... <laughs> no, you don't hear about it. Yeah, people are talking too much about Eddie Alvarez and uh, Justin Gaethje. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Nice. I thought I thought Alvarez was. I, I wasn't sure if Alvarez could actually turn back the clock like he did uh, last weekend. I did not think he could turn the clock back like that. Yeah. He, because uh, after what Connor did to him, man, that shit was bad. Like every time Connor hit him, it looked like maybe his chin was gone. But he took some shots last night. I think with him, it, it's like it looked like his leg was gone. It looked like his chin was gone. It looked like some of his teeth were gone. But it doesn't matter. Like he just keeps, <laughs> just fucking keeps going. And also, the longer the fight goes, the longer his arms get. Like he would like, I was, we, he would like uncoil his arms for these uppercuts, and it was like, dude, he, like, his arms were. It was weird because I don't know how do you, how do you pronounce Gaethje's? Is it Gaethje? Gaethje. Gaethje. Justin Gaethje. He like yeah. has these tight little punches, right? Where he's almost like his uh, his triceps are touching his chest when he throws them, and then he throws he throws nice and tight. And then you got he Alvarez, nice who just tight. like literally like it was crazy, like how far away he could throw an uppercut from. It's because he was putting everything on those uppercuts. Yeah. He was trying to get him out of there. You know, he was. I thought his leg. It... His leg, though. I mean, in the beginning, you're like, oh, dude, his leg is. Because I had never seen Gaethje fight. I just heard he was like, you know, the master of violence and. <laughs> And he came out. He, I actually, I had him confused. I don't know who I had him confused with, but I thought he was someone different. I thought he was like stockier, and I thought he was predominantly a wrestler. And then he came in, and I was like, "Wait, this guy's no. this guy's not what I had in mind. He's not all ripped." And then he just went. He started out so fast with those kicks and punches, and I'm like, "This guy's <laughs> this guy's awesome." He's nasty, dude, and he is a wrestler, right? That's the crazy thing is like Justin Gates, he did something that most guys can't do. Right? He went and he made All-American at the University of Northern Colorado, which is not a traditionally. It's a meat slaughter capital of, uh, it's in Greeley. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, but it's not like, they don't know, it's not known for wrestling. No. And he became an NCAA All-American out of that university. So that shows you what type of athlete, what type of commitment he makes to being successful. But when he started fighting, he just kind of. Kind of said to hell with it. You know, he, he wasn't going to fight like a traditional wrestler. And he developed a style that's fun to watch. But also, uh, it's also very, uh, if you're one of his coaches or, or friends, it's concerning if you ask me because he takes so much damage every time he fights. Yeah, I was reading, I mean, I was reading something about every him. Every time. They were telling him like he... He leads with his forehead, so he takes a lot of punishment on his forehead. And I thought he was gonna say it was like a it was like one of those headlines you click on, like uh, he explains why he leads with his forehead or takes hits on his forehead. I thought he was gonna say like, oh, it's the strongest part of my head, and like it doesn't affect your brain or something. But instead, he just said, yeah, no, I think when I take a really good shot, it means I'm about to give another really good shot. <laughs> it was like, no, he no. takes one to give one. Like yeah. he takes one to give one. But no, he was a. They were both both those guys were. I mean, Alvarez's leg. It literally was like. There was a couple times where you, you're kind of like looking through your fingers because you're like, dude, he's going to get kicked one time and his, his leg's just going to bend 90 degrees sideways. And then well, both of them, after a while, I was like, I was watching it with uh, Millar. And mm -hmm. he's like, I, I, can't, I can't watch this because it just felt like any second either one of them was just going to get <laughs> their head knocked off. Like it was. And then, you're, and then you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Then we were sitting there thinking about like, how long is it going to take to recover from this shit? This is crazy. Oh, it take it, it'll take him a little bit. Now, thing about this is though, um, Justin was kicking Eddie like I mean he was kicking him so much 
and it looked like towards the end of the uh it looked like towards the end of of the fight it was really starting to pay dividends because i thought eddie was up two rounds to zero uh when they went to round three but i was like man justin may stop him with leg kicks because he's done that on a number of occasions already yeah but there, um there was a time when so in the beginning it looked like eddie's leg was you know went from it was hurting it was hurting it was take it was like bending weird every time it got kicked and then there was a mm-hmm. point in the second round where it almost looked like he just kind of stamped his foot on the ground and said all right it fucking hurts but it is what it is i'm not going to worry about it for a while maybe it was cuz gaethje stopped kicking it for a while and then all yeah and then all of a sudden yeah. at the end it's like it went back to like okay i can't hide this anymore this really hurts and then he had the weird thing on his <laughs> face which they didn't show a replay of what happened like how he got that not all you heard was joe rogan saying Oh wow, he's got a weird swelling on his face, but you couldn't see it from the camera. It was on the other side, and then he turned around, and it was like his teeth must. I mean, it must have been his teeth or something must have been fucked up. It looked like he, it could have his jaw was broken, right? It looked like his jaw was broken, but yeah. It, it, I, I read a report today that said it wasn't. You know, he wasn't. His jaw was not broken. Uh, he's gonna be fine, and and uh, he just he's just obviously gonna need some time. Yeah. Time that he would have needed anyway when you fight a fight uh, like that. But then after Gaethje Alvarez, we get to the co cool main event Francis and Ghanu versus Alistair Overeem. Yeah. What did you guys think of that? What the yeah, fuck? That man? was nuts. Like, I'd never seen Ngannou fight before. And, uh, <laughs> that was like a street fighter. Yeah, uppercut. I wanted to say that. I was like, God, like, oh, he's huge. Oh, you know what? And the first I was like, I told Margo, Overeem's. About the same size, except for his head's like dinky, and then Mars like, no, dude, the other guy's way bigger. And they, they he was they, way they, bigger. They he shifted so to another angle, and it was like, holy shit, that guy is huge, and he's so like ripped for that size. <laughs> so that was yeah, and then it was just, I mean, I don't even know how to describe that punch. I was just, I mean, it was it was one of the few times where where they kept saying. Alistair Overeem's still down, and his toes are still curled up, and he's still stiff as a board. And it was like, dude, is are we? I mean, is is he dying? Like, <laughs> like it started to, started to freak you out. Like Francis, dude, Francis hit him so hard, dog. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, I was like, uh, I was like, what the hell? I mean, bro, it was. You know what the problem was? It was like, you look at Alistair over him, right? And Alistair over him is a big guy, massive guy. But when he got in there with Ngannou, he looked kind of slim and skinny. And he never looked skinny compared to people. But he always looks he, like oh. Overeem's head always makes it real. You realize he he's a certain size. And then everything except his head became a different size. <laughs> Whereas he, Ngannou is like just through gi- and through. gigantic. But the punch was like, remember when uh, Pico knocked the guy out the other day? Where it was just like a really low left hand. But like Pico, you know. 155 or knocked the guy out it was a fast little punch like, what happened this one just seemed like i mean you've never seen a guy on his tippy toes leaning backwards with his head like the back of his head touching like the middle of his back after getting punched that was crazy. bro i i always i would say that i was like man i was telling that the king today i was like this dude i was like can you imagine how badly his neck is gonna fucking hurt oh because God. like how often <laughs> Dude, when he, How often have you seen somebody's yeah. head move that fast? When he like swallows his, food, it's like his, his, it's like his throat's got to have so like a fast, curve man. in it or something, or a, it's like a bent tube or your something. Your neck, like your, it looked like it looked like you would imagine someone's head whips whenever they're in like a car accident. Yeah, and then and then it slammed on the ground. Another one. So he's out, <laughs> and his head bounced off the mat, and then. A guy, a guy who jumps on top of him and gives him like the Dan Henderson punch, and it was like I think I think like that happens now. I've gotten to ask that today, like why Francis hit him that last time. And I think that happens because, dude, your momentum is just rolling, right? Yeah. Your momentum's going, you know, so there's no just like turn it off, right, when you see a guy hurt. And for a big, massive mug like that, man, that dude trying to, you know he's trying to really, he's trying to hurt you, man, you know? And he hit him with that uppercut and over him fell and his entire body was just shut off. He had his, all of his senses was gone. Yeah. And then today he's like, oh, hey, guys, happy to report I'm fine, no damage, uh, nothing different, just uh, just a tough fight, I'll go back to the gym. It's like, dude, there's got to be something wrong. What did that, so you told, so you were talking to Kane about it, like, how do you, like, guys in that division, I mean, was Kane just like, well, you're like, holy shit, did you see that fucking knockout? And Kane was like, 
Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, that wouldn't happen. Kane's like, Kane's like, yeah, I didn't really watch it. I saw like the highlights on social media. And he's like, he fucking hits hard. He's he, like, he's fast. Because he was supposed to. There was, he hits hard were, and he's strong. They were going to potentially fight.